Hey guys, uh, today on the show we're talking about a thing that it came out a little while ago, Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. Um, I, I'm way behind on all kinds of stuff for this month, so I thought I'd throw together a quick review of this little title that I, I really uh, had a, had a, quite a time with, and I just never got around to reviewing it. Uh, this is from Severin. Uh, let's check it out. Uh, that wouldn't go down well at all. Oh, we're all gonna die! We're all gonna die! I would never have imagined he'd have a brother as big as me. Six shots, Tina! Stinking murderer. Massacre in Dinosaur Valley, produced by Luciano Martino and directed by Michele Massimo Tarantini or whatever. Credited here as Michael E. Lemmick is one of those movies where you're promised one thing by the name and the poster and upon proce processing, upon pressing play, Jesus, uh, you get something completely different and completely delightful. There is Dinosaur Valley in so much as there is a place where our characters wind up that is in turn called Dinosaur Valley, and there is a massacre in that a lot of these characters die, often in pretty horrible ways. However, this is just barely a cannibal movie. So if an hour and change of tribal munchies is what you're looking for, bub, this ain't it. This sucker reminds me a lot of uh, Gwendolyn, another Severn title that's uh, pretty high quality. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's by no means a one-to-one -one comparison, but both seem to advertise one thing while providing another, much more zany film. And boy howdy, this sucker is wild. Uh, we got our intrepid paleontologist hero with an attitude, your survivalist douchebag, your scantily clad babes, your cartoonish cannibal tribe, your terrible dubbing, your greedy capitalist pigs, a gratuitous sex scene, 80s Italian sexism, plenty of beautiful on-location Brazilian photography, and a standoff between two men and a rattlesnake. Oh, also this amazing plane crash. Dinosaur Valley is a pretty simple narrative. Uh, Michael Sapke, whose brief 80s acting career consisted of this, Devilfish, Blast Fighter, and 2019 After the Fall of New York, stars as paleontologist badass Kevin Hall. He's traveled to a small town in Brazil in search of the Valley of the Dinosaurs and drags around an incredibly impractical crate of dinosaur bones. Because you know, paleontologist. After getting into his prerequisite bar fight and bone zoning, Kevin manages to get on a small plane flight that'll theoretically help in his quest, only for that plane to crash in the middle of the Amazon and, as luck would have it, right around his legendary destination. Stuck with a whole bunch of assholes and an admittedly pretty cool photographer with a problematic aesthetic. Okay, now move around some more plus one smoking babe in need of a new daddy, Kevin has to try and make it out of the jungle with as many of his fellow passengers intact as possible. Spoiler, he does not fully succeed. There's a lot to like here, especially for fans of dumb as a bag at Tucker Carlson's B-movies. Michael Sapke is easily the standout, and it's a crying shame he didn't wind up with a bigger career because he definitely had the charisma to be like a legit star. Unfortunately, this wound up being his last leading role before quitting the acting biz. Before we get into the extras, I'd like to pimp my wares for a moment. This channel does not get by on ad revenue. Since most of my videos are ad restricted, thanks to my potty mouth and the gory fucked up shit I talk about, oh, there I go again, as such, I am forever grateful to my amazing patrons who not only financially support this channel, but also provide me with great conversation on our Discord server and during our Keensploitation movie nights. So if you have a few bucks to spare, I'd appreciate you helping out. Uh, if you don't, that's, that's also A-OK. -okay. I appreciate you watching, liking, and commenting on my videos. Holy shit, I am awful at self-promotion. On to the extras. 
Valley Boy is a 23 minute interview with actor Michael Sopke. Uh, he talks about getting into acting due to his jail time of all things, uh, leading to a modeling career and various issues with the production. He's a really damn entertaining and charismatic fella. Uh, I could have listened to him for a full hour. No problem. Uh, he also has the most adorable glasses. Those things are, are super cute. Lost in Brazil is a 14-minute interview with co-writer Dardano Cecchetti, uh, who starts by explaining the... I'm going to get canceled for that one day. Uh, who starts by explaining the origins of the surnames Tarantini and Tarantino, uh, working with Tarantino's laid-back... Tarantino, Jesus Christ. Working with Tarantini's laid-back style, uh, the origin of the film's concept as a giallo of all things, which is a wild story, uh, and the influence of Naked Lunch on his writing style, which makes so much sense of the the cut up multi-genre nature of this film oh uh he also takes a moment uh to note how much of a pain in the ass full she was and if that doesn't equate to a solid interview i don't know what does good stuff uh we also get a nine minute deleted uh and extended uh scenes reel in both english and italian variants although the actual deleted material doesn't have audio um uh, we also get a theatrical trailer uh, and the Italian credits. Ooh. Ah. So yeah, uh, what we have here is a lovely 4K scan of a surprisingly fun, silly slice of Italian sleaze that, yes, does give in to some of the less savory elements, but overall provides more thrills and laughs than anything else. If you like dumb adventure movies with maybe just a, just a little nibble of the cannibal genre, definitely give it a try. That's all I got. Look how you got this cover. You got the, the slip that I can't show on camera, really, because it's got nipples. Uh, nothing in there. You know, it's a fun time. Fun time. Not as advertised, but it's a fun time. Go watch a movie.